Hello, friends. Jim Messina once again for VintageDrumstalk.com. And we're going to continue with another section with Tim Northup at the famous Northup Vintage Drum Museum, along with our special guest, Sticky Wicket. Hello, boys. How are you doing? Uh, hey, Jim. Uh, I understand you are in the museum right now as we speak. We are. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, Drums everywhere. <laughs> now, now, Sticky has made a special uh, trip over here to the States. He's from England, and uh, he's doing it up right. Uh, Tim is his host, and I don't know if you folks know this, but Tim is an excellent host. Uh, yes, they're in Oneonta, yeah. New York. No, Lynn is an excellent host. <laughs> <laughs> My better half. It's a He's he he has had a week planned out for Sticky, and yesterday, Bab actually was just I understand fantastic. Uh, had some special guest drummers, special guest drums, and it was just a, yeah. a, a great day. I understand. Uh, and I actually, Sticky, I know you got to play a little with some other celebrity drummers, and uh, you got to play some of those sets. Uh, once again. What did you enjoy the most? Is there is there anything that you've seen in there? Well, I mean, this is an unfair question. Anything you've seen that blows you away, but <laughs> it all does. I know you. I know you're familiar with you know old 1920s drums, but come on, that museum is extraordinary. It, and it I is. know it's hard. It's hard when you're asked, "Hey, what was your favorite thing? You know, uh, favorite drum." You did say uh, one of those there was it sounded particularly good, of course. Might be this one right there. Yeah. That is a Sunderland <laughs> Black Beauty, folks. In case you're wondering, uh, one of them that I Tim and I worked a deal on. But Sticky, you got to play that. Um, did you play the was it the, the WFL White Marine Pearl set? Tim, did oh, you play that? Sunderland Radio King. Radio, oh, the radio kit. You mean this one here? Yeah, yeah, I did that one. Yeah, that, I'm right at home with that kit. It's beautiful. I got one very similar. But, um, Tim, you yeah. talk about tuning. Yeah, Tim does have a real magic way of getting these drums to sound and look and sound their best. Pops over in the morning, so I'm just going to tweak set a few things and look at the tuning, and it's always just right. I sat, I sat all the drums, and even. Even the, the China Tom somehow seems to sound harmonious. It picks the right things, puts it right places, and tunes them beautifully. Um, yeah, that kit I love. Um, there's that Slingland over there in the corner, the green, green one. Sea green pearl, yeah. Jim. Sea oh, green pearl. Yes. Is that one of yours, Jim? No, it wasn't, but he loves sea green pearl. Yeah, folks, yeah. we'll put some pictures of that up for you. I mean, yeah. Tim has. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've already been introduced a little bit to Tim's museum with him, you know, doing a quick runaround. But uh, this time around, uh, we're talking with Sticky and 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 talking about the guests that Tim actually has coming in playing on those sets. Now, Sticky, the one thing that that amazed me is that you know as well as I'm going to say Steve Smith who was in there. He's been there. Uh, he loves coming there and playing on those sets. But now look, you've got your style of playing, which is the, is to me is the real thing uh, as far as playing of the era, meaning you played like a 1920s and 30s drummer on <laughs> the songs that I heard you do. Now, when I heard Steve Smith, um, I think he's a little younger, but I mean, come on, the, what he's famous for is, you know, banging out two and four and, you know, all these rock fills with the band Journey over the years. Yet he knew enough to come in here and sit behind these sets and play with brushes and play in the style yeah, that these drums were created for. 
He's got a great feel, great hands. He's great. He's a lovely guy, and he plays wonderful, wonderful drums. And it's a pleasure to play with him. It really was. We had fun. That's the thing too. We yeah. were throwing things, thinking a few phrases around in the style, and I think it worked out. They, really they well. were both smiling ear to ear. They were so <laughs> happy. And had you met Steve before this? Like I'd, I'd seen him and said hello, but that was many years ago at the drum clinic. Yeah, I took my son to see it. Could it be even fifteen no, or twenty? There are, well, Big I think button. you'll find that, that anybody that comes in there and sits down. I mean. There are a lot of guys that are going to come to see you, Tim, that have never played a cap skin ahead. True. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and, yeah. And I think it's natural to just be careful. Uh, yeah. Even though you could, you can actually play harder than you would think on mm -hmm. cap skin heads. You just got to watch it. I mean, some guys are monsters, but uh, we, you know, with rim shots and things like that. But Sticky, what I saw you do was so authentic. There's only <laughs> one other guy, and I don't know his name, but uh, I do have some video of him playing some real honky tonk kind of uh, New Orleans type playing, and he was playing, you know, with the temple blocks and everything. But he was able to, he was, you know, the, the joint was rocking, uh -huh. you know, and they're doing that kind of uh, zoot suit riot type music. And he's, you know, flipping the brushes around like you were doing. And he's playing the, you know, the, the temple blocks that way. Um, a lot of people don't know what to do when they sit down behind, you know, a snare drum with calfskin heads, a 28-inch bass drum, and only Chinese toms mm -hmm. to, to do things yeah. with. And maybe and a set of temple blocks. That, but you seem to hit the nail right on the head. Well, Thank you, Jim. You yeah. are the real deal, my friend. Well, I did that. Uh, I was lucky when I first went to London in the 70s, uh, worked with a guy, a clarinet player, um, who, was a, who was a jazz rock, but he was also a, a New Orleans aficionado. He'd worked in New Orleans in the 50s with some of the old guys. Um, so if you imagine, they were in there probably their, their 50s and 60s in 1950. So they were there from the start of it. And he, he actually he'd actually played with Zooty Singleton and some other drummers. And he, he he told me, explained me the styles he played me, the records. So I, I kind of kind of absorbed it from an early age and always always liked it. And just turned my hand to lots of different things. With Chris Barber's jazz band, I was with Jersey, he plays all those all those styles and learned from him. So I just absorbed it. If you're interested, you take it on, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So, what is your setup now? Your current contemporary setup that you use? I haven't got one. What what <laughs> set vintage do you all play? The way. Just like you, vintage all the way. <laughs> yeah, if, if I'm doing a rock gig, I use the Love Dog Super Classic, or uh, at a push the uh, Vista Light. But the main deal is I, I use my Radio Kings for, for gigs, jazz, you know, swing gigs, because I've got um, a 15, sometimes 17 piece swing orchestra, which is fabulous. And there's nothing else will do the job as far as I'm concerned. And a 26 bass drum like that one. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got a modern set. I don't own one. You know? So is tomorrow going to be another day of playing drums or what? Well, I think we're, we're, we've got to head off on our, on our holidays, my wife and I, but uh, it's not impossible. I might not say, can I just have another quick look before we go tomorrow morning? Yeah. So thanks, Jim. And thank you, Tim. Yeah. It's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah, five yeah. minutes left. Yeah. It's been well, a fantastic say, You're welcome. It was a pleasure. I can't say highly enough about this museum. The drummers and non-drummers, anybody who's, who's got in the slightest bit of interest in music, they should come here. Ah. Thank you. Now, I must say that uh, this has certainly been a pleasure finally meeting you after seeing all those videos and hearing about Sticky Wicket. And I've just said, this is going to be great. This is kind of the highlight yeah. so far of the summer for me uh, and Vintage Drums talk that because uh, more and more people are now are going to know more of who Sticky Wicket is mm -hmm. over here in the States, not just over there with the big band. 
Jim, can I just say that if anybody hasn't heard the videos, they might not find it so easy, but it's on YouTube channel, Next Level Chops, and just put okay. my name in. Next Level Chops. That's the way they'll find it. Okay. They'll put it on the screen for you. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Sure. Now, folks, I want you to make sure you remember the Northup Drum Museum. Tim Northup, okay, because he's going to be making some big waves. This is his year, I keep telling him. Now, if you haven't done so yet, Tim, tell them all the places where they can see uh, any websites or anything that you have, any media that you've put up about the museum. You know, like maybe uh, going to the Zildjian Awards. Oh. The, you want to tell that us is. a little bit about that? That's a whole nother segment, Jim. But we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll do a segment on that. That was I've had a I've had an incredible two weeks. I've got to tell you, just a week ago, yesterday we were at the Zildjian concert VIP. Saw Steve Smith, Sheila E. get inducted, all these other great drummers. And then less than a week later, just a few days later, yeah. Sticky Wicket comes to the museum. Steve comes. We had other special guests. Yeah. It's been oh, a monumental yeah. week here at the museum. Just unbelievable. Now, folks. Yeah. What he's telling you right now is really not so unusual. <laughs> I'm telling you, I talk to him all the time, and I'm amazed with his life. I, I say it's the charmed life of Tim Northup. I'm waiting for a, an animated bluebird to come and rest on his shoulder. <laughs> I'm seen at VintageDrumsTalk.com, along with Tim Northup from the Northup Drum Museum, and the one and only Sticky Wicked. We gotta say <laughs> goodbye for now. Bye for now, Jim. Bye.